good morning, good afternoon, depending upon where you are. Uh, I'm John Hagelin. I will be your host for today, this very, very joyous inaugural celebration of the Navin and Pratimi Doshi Center for Integrative Medicine here in the heart, thriving heart of West LA. Um, I am a quantum physicist and particle astrophysicist and president of Maharshi International University. My credentials, I think, are showing or not, as the case may be. Uh, I don't know what you can see. Can you see the, uh, can you show the screen on the, are we broadcasting the screen? Okay, fantastic. Um, again, I will be your host today. We have a many honored guests with us here who are helping to launch this new initiative, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, this is all about the inauguration on this auspicious Akshaya Tritiya Day, Day of Lasting Achievements in the Vedic calendar, that day of the year in which new initiatives meet with unbounded long-term success. It's very appropriate. We will be introducing before long our most special guests today, Dr. Naveen Doshi and Mrs. Pratima Doshi, who are the inspiration and really the benefactors of this new integrative medical clinic in Los Angeles. A little bit about the clinic first. This uh, location is, as I said, at the very heart of Western LA at the junction of the 10 and the 405, <clears throat> making it one of the easier places to get to in Los Angeles, which uh, says quite a lot. And in this spot, there's this quiet oasis, like the eye of a hurricane, and that is this beautiful building, this residential building, which has been donated by the Doshis to be the center for this extremely important initiative that will, I think, bless and serve the people of Southern California, mainly and beyond. <clears throat> About the center, the Doshi Center is an extension campus of Maharishi International University, which is primarily located in Fairfield, Iowa, USA. And interestingly enough, though, um, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the founder of that university, first alighted in continental United States 50-something years ago, almost 60 years ago, uh, in Los Angeles. And from then, his global initiative to teach transcendental meditation to millions of people began. So in a way, Marshi International University is coming back home by opening this, this branch campus and clinical operation here called the Navin and Pratima Dosha, Doshi Center for Integrative Medicine. It is an Ayurvedic and integrative medicine teaching and research clinic Again, serving the population of Southern California, but across California, even across the country. At this new center, patients will consult with a leading Western physician, an MD, and an Ayurvedic physician, or Vaidya, and together they will evaluate and interpret the health condition of a client and recommend a range of treatments for that client that span the full spectrum of allopathic to inter integrative to Ayurvedic medicine. It'll serve as a clinical training campus for students in Ayurveda and integrative medicine so that a client coming may choose a private consultation, but they can also choose what's called a clinical practicum visit. And in that clinical practicum visit, uh, they will be joined by uh, um, the physicians, of course, will be there, and the Ayurvedic Vajas will be there doing a full consultation and analysis of the patient, but they'll be joined by a group of students from MIU's Master of Science degree in Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine. The students will observe the MD and the Vajra interacting with the client as they diagnose the patient's uh, conditions, and um, the students themselves will take what's called Nadi Vigyan, very sophisticated Ayurvedic pulse diagnosis, which is one of the many marvels of Ayurvedic medicine. And they will hear the physician and the Vaja explain in detail how they interpreted the client's condition and made their recommendations. So there'll be at any given time about 25 students in this building, Master of Science students, gaining their training with in-person contact 
with the patients that come. Uh, MIU's program is the preeminent American program for teaching and research on Ayurveda. This Master of Science in Maharshi Ayurveda in Integrative Medicine is one of only two accredited such programs in America. And at 350 master's students, it's by far the largest. And in addition, MIU's undergraduate program in Ayurvedic medicine has another 250 students. So this is a, a rising trend, and I'll talk about that in just a moment as well. Also, this will be a center for groundbreaking research on integrative medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. This Doshi Center will develop a significant program of research extending the extraordinary record of Maharshi International University's research in the field of health. Over the last 30 years, MIU has received more than $25 million in grants from the National Institutes of Health to study the effects of Maharshi Ayurveda, the consciousness-based approach to health on conditions such as heart disease, hypertension, and post-traumatic stress syndrome, and much more. So <clears throat> we are looking at, I'm sure, a very bright future for this Doshi Center of Integrative Medicine. The need is clearly great for effective prevention and for health promotion. The demand is surging, and the time has finally come for the world's most ancient and profound science of health and well-being, rooted in the Vedas, to take its rightful place in our modern world. Indeed, as I'll mention now, the latest discoveries in quantum physics are bringing to light the profundity and power of the Vedic wisdom and bringing new respect and appreciation for the tradition that has been carefully, this tradition which has been very carefully, I'd say faithfully maintained throughout the millennia of the long, long Vedic culture. And I just want to highlight a sentence we just heard. The latest discoveries of quantum physics are now bringing to light the profundity and power of the Vedic wisdom. Some people might hear that and say, really, truly, how? And I'm going to explain that now for a few minutes, and then we're going to proceed to hear from all of our honored guests today. So, the Ayurvedic wisdom comes from the ancient Vedic texts rooted in the Vedic tradition of ancient and modern India. But the amazing thing about this wisdom, this ancient wisdom, is that it is ultra-modern. It is, at the same time, extremely profound. I think what we could say is, truthfully, Ayurvedic medicine is, indeed, ultra-modern, cutting-edge, unified field-based medicine. Unified field-based medicine. So let me explain that. The world around us is a material world, but the material world we see through our senses, the macroscopic world around us, is just the tip of the iceberg of reality. Underneath this tip of the iceberg, which we cannot see through our senses, are the microscopic inner worlds of the molecules and the atoms and the nuclei and so forth. The whole physical universe is structured in layers of creation. From the superficial, diverse, macroscopic world to these deeper and deeper, smaller and smaller worlds within worlds within worlds within. From the macroscopic, superficial to the microscopic, fundamental. And this progress of modern science in exploring nature's inner core began with hundreds of years of Newtonian physics, also called brick and mortar physics because it's the physics of the macroscopic objects that surround us. But as you know, 100 years ago, that classical physics gave rise to what is called quantum mechanics, the physics of the atom. And this new physics, the physics that allows us to understand the atom, is a complete different science, a different logic, a different language, a different mathematics. And that is the world of the atom, the very different world. I should say it's not really at that point 
a world of material reality. It is a world of abstract mental potentiality. It's a world of mind, not a world of matter. That's the surprise. You dig into the core of matter and you discover that, that material just sort of slips between your fingers. It disappears into something as ethereal as what we call mind. Anyway, without dwelling on that, deeper than quantum mechanics is quantum field theory, yet a new science, a new language, a new logic, a new mathematics that was necessary to understand the atomic nucleus, which is a million times smaller than the atom. And like that, worlds within worlds, culminating in what Einstein called the unified field, the unified source of the entire diversified universe. You could say the fountainhead of all the laws of nature that govern all the different levels of our physical universe. And the story works like this. The ultimate reality of life in modern science and in Vedic science as well is a universal ocean of pure being, pure intelligence, pure universal consciousness, an ocean of silence. But upon exploration of this ocean of silence, upon the exploration of consciousness, the exploration of the unified field from physics, you find that it's not an inert silence, it's a dynamic silence. And consciousness is a dynamic reality. You wouldn't expect it to be inert. So this unified field is a dynamic silence, and this inner dynamism, these eternal fluctuations, which we call Veda in the language of Veda, which we call quantum fluctuations in the language of modern science, these eternal ripples, these eternal reverberations, these eternal sounds, from this eternal unmanifest dynamics of essentially consciousness, pure knowingness, what happens is, that this is the physical story of the emergence of the universe, and there's evidence that this is how indeed it works, from that eternal fluctuations, a vacuum bubble, a space-time bubble emerges that expands exponentially, leading to what we call the Big Bang. Now I'm going to go back and turn back and start again because we're going to go through the first steps a little more carefully. And this is where Veda comes in, and Ayurveda comes in, surprisingly. So this dynamic silence gives rise to the universe, and constantly does so not just at the time of the Big Bang, the universe is constantly in a state of reformation, of transformation. So the first thing to emerge from this ocean of silence, pure being, pure consciousness, the unified field, are what are called the five spin types, if you're a physicist. The spin two graviton, responsible for the force of gravity. The spin three halves gravitino. Spin one forces like electromagnetism, the nuclear force the radioactive force. The spin one-half particles like the electrons and the quarks and the neutrinos and then the protons and the neutrons of which were made. And then finally, the Higgs boson, the spinless Higgs boson. These are the five fundamental elements of creation. In physics, we call these spin types. In the language of the Veda, in the language of Ayurveda, these are the pancha mahabhutas, the five elements, space, air, fire, water, and earth of which everything is made. And yes, it may seem surprising that the ancient rishis could have cognized this structure that is the result today of generations of physicists exploring through the tools of instrumentation and mathematics could come to the same reality that the world is made of five fundamentals. But it doesn't stop there because in physics we know that these five, the fundamental elements, the particles and forces of nature, actually come from a more fundamental unity of three, of three elements from which the five emerge. And without going into detail, those are called the three superfields, which then divide, you could say, to become the five elements of nature. Now that is this exact same structure also in the Vedic science and of Ayurveda, where it's these three prakritis, or three doshas, from which all physical creation emerges. These three fundamental abstract essences that are at the basis of all of matter. That includes the human physiology, 
but it includes the fundamental particles and forces of nature as well. So the whole universe emerges from one indivisible wholeness, the unified field, into three fundamentals. And these three fundamental qualities or properties or elements, the five Mahabhutas emerge, the five elements, five spin types emerge, and from there everything is created. The atoms, the molecules, the human bodies, the planets, the galaxies, that's how the universe emerges. And this parallel between modern science on the left and the Vedic science on the right including Ayurveda, is exact. It's mathematically profound. It's a real connection. So now Ayurveda, we're almost finished with this lesson, which is going to be the reason why Ayurveda is so important, the reason why we're moving to California, so to speak, and opening up an Ayurvedic clinic, which has tremendous importance for the health of the people of this area. We now understand, or anyone familiar with Ayurveda would know, that Ayurveda is really fundamentally about these three doshas, these three properties, these three fundamental elements. And of course the Ayurveda is to do with the human body, to do with human health, to do with human vitality, to do with the prevention of disease, to do with longevity. But at the basis of it all, Ayurveda analyzes our human body, human being, in terms of these the balance of these three elements, these three doshas or three prakritis. So that's deep. That is as deep as medicine can get, almost as deep. Because if you compare that to modern medicine, modern medicine is incredibly sophisticated. It is a remarkably developed science and developing all the time. But it is primarily what you could call molecular medicine, medicine based upon chemistry. Yes, on the surface, we have things like orthopedics and surgery and physical therapy, which deal with human beings at the macro level. But mostly modern medicine is to do with, is to do with pharmacology and with balancing the chemicals of the body. So that's where modern medicine is at today. And it's powerful. It also is dangerous. It's complicated. Every medicine has an intended cure and comes with five minutes of side effects, which you'll hear on almost every commercial on television these days. It's complicated because the world of our molecules, the molecular me, the molecular you, is a world of tens of thousands of different organic molecular species. And when you're ever dealing with a system with tens of thousands of different types of entities, different species of molecule, it's a very complicated society within us, and it's very easy to throw that off balance. So modern medicine, due to its complexity, is almost inevitably linked with side effects. That is the state of medicine today. In comparison, Ayurvedic medicine deals with a more holistic and vastly more profound level of the body. Yes, Ayurveda does deal with pharmacology. It does deal with physical therapy, but it really, its roots are really at this much deeper level. So, 10 million, 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 million times smaller, more fundamental, and more powerful than chemical medicine is medicine based on the three doshas, medicine based on the three properties. That is where Ayurveda primarily functions at the first sprouting of our physiology from the unified field of consciousness. And that is why Ayurveda is potentially so powerful and remarkably free of side effects because it is more fundamental and it is much more holistic. Finally, though, I will say this. Ayurveda in the world these days, at least in recent decades, has primarily been based on the Prakritis, but it goes deeper still. It goes deeper than the three Prakritis, all the way to the level of the unified field itself. Because at the core of Ayurveda is the science of yoga. Yoga is an indispensable aspect of Ayurveda. It's the deepest, most foundational part of Ayurveda. It's the consciousness element in Ayurveda, even though the consciousness element has been 
largely left out of Ayurveda in these recent centuries and decades. Maharshi Mahesh Yogi really restored the primary importance of consciousness-based medicine, of the yoga aspect of Ayurveda. And yoga is all about the unifying field, the field of pure consciousness. So in a quick picture for those who may be relatively new, what is yoga? Yoga firstly understands that the human being is structured the same as the rest of nature in layers. Human being is structured in layers of creation. The human mind is structured in layers of creation. And at the surface of the mind are surface thoughts, day-to-day -day thoughts, verbal thoughts. But deeper than this surface mind and surface thoughts are subtler levels of mind, the level of abstract reasoning, the level of fine, fine feeling, the level of pure being, pure abstract awareness, pure consciousness. And yoga is a system, powerful system, use, using technologies, techniques like transcendental meditation. It's really modern yogic meditation. And it's just basically to take the surface mind, take us from where we are, typically, on the surface of life, and to, to take the mind within, to guide our awareness quietly within to explore these deeper and deeper and deeper levels of mind and feeling, and slipping beyond the faintest feeling to experience pure being in what is called the state of samadhi, or transcending. Transcending is a natural state of consciousness. It has been verified to be a fourth state of consciousness as natural as waking, dreaming, and sleeping. In the Vedic literature, the literature of yoga, the Upanishads, they describe the meditative state, samadhi, as the peaceful, the blissful, the undivided or unified. That is thought to be the fourth state of consciousness. That is the self. That is your own consciousness. That is to be known. And yes, founder of MIU, founding president of MIU, Dr. Robert Keith Wallace, discovered many years ago that this fourth state of consciousness, this meditative state, is indeed, biologically, demonstrably, a fourth state of consciousness. And the physiologists call it a hypometabolic physiological state. That just means a state of inner awareness deep, profound physiological rest, restful alertness. And this experience is important. This is yoga, experiencing pure consciousness, a state of rest, deeper than sleep, a state of very profound relaxation. And that experience is incredibly good for your health, incredibly important. So in terms of different ways of obtaining rest and relaxation, transcending, transcendental meditation is a technique for that, is much more powerful than any other type of rest, much deeper, much more healing. Meta-analyses exploring many, many different techniques and methods have found that this process, this transcending, is far more effective at reducing blood pressure, for example, than other forms of relaxation, indeed, in, term, in, in many hypertensive drugs. Extensive research now, and, and tens of millions of dollars of research funded by the National Institutes of Health have shown that the meditative state, pure consciousness, transcending, prevents heart disease. It prevents stroke. It prevents premature death, markedly reducing heart attack, even in subjects who have heart disease. And finally, a couple more slides only, Marked reductions in every major category of disease. Every major category of disease is markedly reduced just through the experience of yoga, the experience of pure consciousness, the practice of transcendental meditation. If you look carefully at this chart, you see marked reductions in every category except childbirth, which is arguably not a disease. I guess meditation is not a very effective contraceptive against birth. But all those other things that you'd ever go to the hospital for are markedly reduced by meditating. And finally, and this is getting to be very interesting to people like me, meaning of my age, 
a slowing of the aging, a very significant slowing of the aging process, indeed a reversal of the aging process to a significant degree such that people who've been meditating or transcending for five years or so regularly, twice a day, a few minutes, can have biological ages that are 12 to 15 years younger than their chronological counterparts, than their friends of the same age. So, in summary, Ayurveda revived to its full profundity and depth includes yoga, and because Ayurveda includes yoga transcending as a very powerful tool for health and the prevention of disease, remarkably powerful. We can say that Ayurveda, including yoga, is not just medicine based on the three doshas, as profound and subtle as that already is. Ayurveda is atma-based medicine. Yoga is consciousness-based medicine. Yoga, and therefore Ayurveda, is unified field-based medicine, which makes it so powerful, which makes it completely holistic <coughs> and automatically, <coughs> automatically free of side effects. So, conclusion, Ayurvedic medicine is atma-based medicine, consciousness-based medicine. Ayurvedic medicine, as ancient as it may be, is truly ultra-modern, cutting edge, unified field-based medicine. So when we ask the question, do the latest discoveries of quantum physics bring light, bring to light the profundity and power of the Vedic wisdom? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And that's one of the re reasons for its resurgence. It's modern science that is helping the resurgence of Ayurveda on a big scale because it, Ayurveda is, should be, and is evidence-based and based on the deepest principles known to science. So we are celebrating today the creation of this new center for integrative medicine, Ayurvedic medicine united with allopathic medicine, which has really been the inspiration. It's been inspired by our great benefactors, Dr. Navin Doshi and Mrs. Pratima Doshi, who are just um, the most remarkable individuals with uh, just have led and continue to lead the most incredible lives. Let me introduce Dr. Navin Doshi with a few words and uh, perhaps he'll come and join me and hopefully Nav hopefully Pratima will join me here on this podium. Dr. Doshi <coughs> is a great scientist. He's a humanitarian. He's an author. He's a philanthropist of great significance. He is, for example, the founder of UCLA's Navin and Pratima Doshi Endowed Chair of Indic Studies, Indian Studies. He is the founder of LMU's Doshi Professor of Indic and Comparative Theology, currently held by the marvelous uh, Professor Chris Chappell. He is the founder of the Doshi Professor of Asian Art at the California Institute of Integral Studies, a position currently held by Professor Debashish Banerjee. He is the founder, with his family, of the Doshi Family Bridge Builder Award, honoring individuals and organizations dedicated to fostering understanding between cultures, peoples, and disciplines, with a, a long list of, of remarkable recipients, a few of whom are listed here. We had the great delight last year at Maharishi International University <coughs> of honoring Dr. Doshi with the degree of Doctor of World Peace, Honoris Causa, and that was an incredible joy, an absolutely wonderful celebration for our university, university to honor and to celebrate Dr. and Mrs. Dosha, Doshi in this way. It really just a marvel marvelous thing. And Dr. Navin Doshi has been celebrated by many books, including South Asian Studies, Bridging Cultures, a felicitation volume to celebrate the life and work of Navin Doshi that was edited by Dr. Shinkara, from whom I'm very much hoping we will be able to hear tonight. And he's not only celebrated in books, he's the author of many books, including this latest book, which is uh, really quite a marvel. 
It's really a life's work, and it's incredibly practical and incredibly profound. Here's a picture of it on, on, on screen also. Um, I'm tempted. I, I won't. I'll read a sentence, maybe from the back cover. In Saving Ourselves, the title of the book is Saving Ourselves, a new model for individual and social transformation. Saving ourselves from what? Not from some giant asteroid that is hurtling from to the earth. Saving ourselves from ourselves, from the divisive trends that are tearing our world apart. By what? By looking to deeper solutions that exist within us, in fact, and that are also well known to the great sages and scholars from cultures throughout time, all brought to light very beautifully in this book. I'm tempted to just read a comment by Phil Goldberg, who says, nothing is more important in our globalized world than to bridge the long-standing divides that have caused humanity so much grief between East and West, science and religion, reason and belief, faith and fact, physical and spiritual. Naveen is a man at, at, at home in many cultures, and he has bravely attempted to construct the necessary links, and has done so so convincingly in easy to understand language, drawing on sources as old as the Vedas, and as contemporary as particle physics, he points us inward to consciousness, where we can find the needed resources to fix our self-created problems. This will be going into print in just some days from now, and it's something I strongly recommend people do not miss. So, and finally, of course, Dr. Navin and Pratima Doshi are the inspiration and principal benefactors of this new center for integrative medicine. Dr. Navin Doshi, Mrs. Pratima Doshi, amazing individuals. I've said a lot about Dr. Doshi. Um, there's not much one can say about Pratiba, except she is the inspiration, the organizing power, the silent strength, and basically the goddess, uh, real goddess of that family, and a blessing to everybody. Really a great, great blessing and a great, great honor to know her, how, how incredibly helpful and intelligent she is, a rare, rare soul. So at this point, I would like to hand the mic over to Dr. Naveen Doshi to share his thoughts on this occasion uh, before introducing our doctors and our advisors. And welcome and thank you very, very much. And thank you, Pratima, very, very much. Thank you. So sh should I start now? Yes, please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning, friends. Thank you so much, my dear friend, President Abney, Provost Harriet, for establishing MRU Center for Integrative Medicine. Also, thank you, Michael, Brad, Jerry, Nora, my family and friends, supporting this project. Now, a few words on giving from the Gitanjali by Nobel Laureate Rabindranath Tagore. Oh Lord Krishna, you empty this vessel and fill it with fresh life in perpetuity. You carry this fruit over hills and dales and breathe through it maladies eternally. Your infinite gifts come to us, ages pass. You keep giving and there is still room to fill. If you seek wealth, then help others to earn it. Someone will help you earn it, earn it too. Money is like blood, is the life energy of all social systems. Circulation must continue to keep the living organism alive and vital. When we give a charitable contribution, we get back a portion of it from tax breaks. MIU Provost Scott Harriet, we thank you profusely for structuring the contract to get us the most benefit with our, with your ingenuity. Besides that, why MIU? If 
I were a young person ready to enroll in a university, my first choice would be MIU. Why? Because MIU will teach me not only the stuff of the chosen profession, but also about keeping myself in full control of my all faculties, avoiding hate and anger, keep, keeping me in totally in peace. Such an education is hard to find in other universities. In matter of establishing an endowment, I feel that I'm getting the most mileage out of my hard earned money. <laughs> I also admire very highly qualified people at MIU for their simple, saintly living, denying our lucrative positions elsewhere. A parent's instinct are to provide to their children the best of everything, including education, health, and wealth. But giving too much often takes away their motivation to excel in their endeavor. This could drive them to their downfall associated with drug and alcoholism. Earthly pleasures are short-lived, but charitable acts are feel good forever. There is a reason for these good feelings. We are not only connected having the same spiritual substance called Atman, but connected also materially and mentally. Materially, there is a lot more common stuff among ourselves than differences. We had discovered a young girl in Alaska during our travels, resembling with her niece from India. If Adam and Eve were the first couple on this earth, then generations that follow implies we are all cousins to each other. We are connected mentally also in many ways. It is a miracle that we are able to communicate among ourselves with our non-local, non-material mind connected to the brain. Rupert Sheldrake has described convincingly about our connectedness through morphic resonance. We must also realize the non-permanent nature of our existence. When I die, materially everything, including my possessions, stays here with my dead body. But my good deeds will stay in minds of most people. The human species is distinguished through its psychological self. Indian mythology describes the game of life in this way. Brahma, the god of creation, not only created humans, but also demons and angels. Demons lack ethics, compassion, and are totally ruthless. A man or an animal in form can be a demon human or angel. Brahma's rules of gain were simple. Demons could transform to humans by being compassionate. Humans could transform to angels by becoming charitable. The receiver, desperate to receive much needed help, could believe the giver must be an angel and control our desires implying that the person has gone through the process of detachment, recognizing the rules of the game, has transcended to highest state of being, that is becoming selfless and full of universal love. In short, his three attributes, also known as Daya, Dan, and Daman, maintain the separation of three categories of life and shows the path of transcendence towards the highest blissful state of Satchita Ananda. In matters of game of life, we are supposed to play, we think of Lord Shiva, the dancing Nataraja, playing the game of creation and destruction. Also think of an edited monologue of William Shakespeare. All the words are staged, all are man and woman, nearly clear. They have their exits and their entrances in seven stages. The infant, mewling, puking in the nurse's arms, 
a winding schoolboy with shining morning face. <laughs> and then the lover and the soldier, full of strange oath. Then the justice with round belly. The sixth stage shifts with spectacles on the nose and pouch on side, turning again towards childish tavern, <laughs> pipes and whistles. Last scene that ends in <coughs> second childishness and mere oblivion. Now compare this vision with a Gujarati poem. Rakhna Ramakara Mara Rame Ramta Rakya Re Mrutyu Lokni Mati Mati Manav Thene Avya Re Rakhna Ramakara A rough translation is that we humans made of earth's clay must keep playing the game of life that God wishes us to play. So the game is to keep playing, but keep transcending with good karmas and discover brighter light. The light in every sense is a conduit to discover God. The sun in Upanishads is stated as Sutratma. Rays of Sutratma are like needle piercing all the jivatma, meaning every life source. Each of us has to realize oneness with the cosmic wind and the sun. If not, life soul cannot cross the frontiers of death, denying immortality. Based upon Tibetan Buddhism, when I die, I will face the brightest light. And I'm supposed to hold it. If I succeed, I will attain Nibbana. If not, I will face the light with receding brightness. The state of equilibrium depends upon the quality of my karmas. Our endeavors are to keep learning and help others learn to get rid of the darkness. I hope together we can design more projects to enlighten more of us, providing good health, through Ayurveda, our endeavor should be such that we are able to hold the brightest light after that. Pratima and I thank you all. Namaste. <coughs> <coughs> That's really, really beautiful. That was lovely. That was so sweepingly profound and concise and capturing pretty much the essence of everything that we need to know in life. It's really, really beautiful. Such wise, wise people, the Doshis. I have not yet to meet too much of their other family members except one. I hope to get to know them all much better because uh, what an amazing source from which they have all come. It's really beautiful. At this point, I would like to introduce uh, our medical doctors and, um, and Vijas. And I'm going to start, and this will be brief, but it'll be, <laughs> it's going to be quite impressive. It'll start with a brief introduction to Dr. Robert Schneider, um, who is, we can go to that slide, whose um, remarkable credentials are summarized here. He is the dean of our College of Integrative Medicine at Marshy International University, under which umbrella, under which auspices, this Doshi Center for Integrative Medicine has been created. His MD is from Rutgers. He's the recipient of $25 million in grants from the National Institutes of Health for advanced research and prevention, particularly on Ayurveda and yoga. Um, he has 175 <coughs> publications of clinical research on mind-body medicine, aging, and cardiovascular health. Uh, he's a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. Um, he's been researching Ayurveda now since 1984. So you can do the math. And Dr. Schneider is connected, I believe, with us on Zoom. And I'd love to hear a few words, Dr. Schneider, uh, in support of the institute that is under your auspices, ultimately. Thank you, President Hagelin. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes, yes. It's a pleasure to be participate in the founding of the Doshi Center for Integrative Medicine today. This is a milestone in Maharshi's vision to bring the knowledge of perfect health to the whole world and create a disease-free society. Maharshi has been teaching 
the yoga or meditation aspect of Ayurveda since, since the late 1950s. And in the mid 1980s, he began to bring out the other elements of Ayurveda in his revival, this total knowledge of perfect health. And then soon after that, the rest of the world began to catch on. Um, as you mentioned, I came to MIU in 1984 to, to begin uh, the clinical practice and research in, in Ayurveda. And uh, about five years later, the NIH began to catch on. The National Institutes of Health awarded the first grant for the study of the yoga aspect of Maharshi Ayurveda. And soon after that, the NIH, through the instigation of the senior senator from Iowa, Senator Tom Harkin, uh, founded uh, what is now called the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, uh, just a few years after Maharshi saw this coming and helped to bring it about uh, in the world. And over those years, the National Institutes of Health and its National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health have funded, as you mentioned, many millions of dollars worth of research on Maharshi Ayurveda, uh, both its, its uh, yoga modalities and its behavioral modalities and its physiological modalities. And soon after that, or actually it was about a decade after that, uh, the American Heart Association began to, began to catch on after many dozens of studies were, were published and ultimately several hundred studies on, on Maharshi Ayurveda and its various modalities. The American Heart Association in the 2000s and in the last few years has issued a series of at least three scientific statements on prevention of heart disease with natural medicine and integrative modalities. And they've highlighted the role of Maharshi's transcendental meditation as part of Maharshi Ayurveda in preventing heart disease. In just the past few months, the American Hospital Association has uh, issued its own statement on non-drug treatments for hypertension and heart disease uh, and recognizing this, this work. And funnily enough, the Indian government has formed its own ministry of Ayurveda, uh, uh, prompted in part by this work of Maharshi Ayurveda. It was uh, in, in the early 2000s that the government of India formed its ministry of Ayush, Ayurveda, Yoga, and the other indigenous systems, Unani, Siddha, and homeopathy. And the World Health Organization is catching on uh, because in, uh, after this initiative that Maharshi began, it formed its, its uh, section on traditional medicine, which very much recognizes and encourages uh, Ayurveda and other traditional systems of natural medicine. So the world is, is moving and the work that MIU has been doing for the past 40 years and in ultimately 50 years and its golden jubilee celebration coming up is changing the collective consciousness, is changing policy uh, and the practice and teaching of, of healthcare. You mentioned that MIU has bachelor's, master's and PhD programs uh, in Ayurveda and integrative health practice and research and now we're developing the first fellowship for doctors who have completed their modern medicine training uh, in, in Ayurveda and integrative health. And we hope that the Doshi Center will be a center for training of, of these MD level doctors as well as bachelor's, master's and PhD students. Other news is Oxford University Press, the premier medical textbook publisher in the world, uh, considered by many people, has invited a textbook for doctors and health professionals on integrative Ayurveda. And this will be the first professional level textbook coming out of MIU uh, for use not only in our educational programs, but for doctors 
and integrative practitioners all over the world. And we're hoping that this Doshi Center will expand to become a, a full academic health center. The role of any university-based um, program, the role of any medical school, as MIU is rapidly becoming, an integrative medical school is threefold, uh, clinical practice, education, and research. And they all support each other. Um, education trains clinical practitioners, and then research provides the stuff for the development of, of education and to keep up with the latest discoveries, a number of which you've highlighted today from your research in theoretical physics. And we hope that the Doshi Center will not only be a center for, for medical physics, but we hope that it'll be a center for clinical research. Uh, just in the past few weeks, one of our great professor Vaijas, Vaija Manohar, uh, has, uh, has his research published on Maharshi Nadi Vigyan or pul Ayurvedic pulse diagnosis, uh, published in a top journal. And we hope that more research coming out of the Doshi Center as part of MIU's initiative, uh, but certainly being out there in the field and in Los Angeles. And um, there are a lot of people with, who would like to improve their health in, in Los Angeles. And we think that their participation in these programs would not only help themselves uh, and their families, but will create new knowledge. So that is the vision that I would uh, propose for the Doshi Center for clinical practice, advancement of edu education and, and research. And for that changing uh, another major step or milestone in changing world consciousness as Dr. Doshi is writing about in his new book and as MIU has been doing for 50 years so I see this as a very exciting time of expansion and, and, and uh, being on a roll on being on this path to accomplishing MIU's mission, which is, which is creating a disease-free society in the health area, as well as fulfillment in all the other areas of, of education. So congratulations to the Doshis, congratulations to you, President Hagelin, to all of our faculty and all of our participants today in this next milestone in, in the development of ideal healthcare and world health. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Schneider, and <clears throat> congratulations to you for such a, a rich, rich life thus far, still blossoming in the area of integrative medicine, research on Ayurvedic medicine, on yoga aspect especially. You're really a pioneer in this field and you do a great justice to the knowledge. I'd like to next introduce our Associate Dean of the College of Integrative Medicine at Maharshi International University, Paul Moorhead. Dr. Moorhead has his PhD from MIU. He is the director of our online, our very large, online Master of Science program in Maharshi Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine. He's been teaching Transcendental Meditation, the yoga aspect of Ayurvedic Medicine for 47 years in Ayurveda, Maharshi Ayurveda for 32 years, and he's developed many, many courses on critical subjects of pulse diagnosis, yoga asanas, diet, digestion, nutrition, prevention, physiology, and also Veda in physiology, which is an amazing subject. Dr. Moorhead. Thank you very much, President Hagelin. And thank you so much to the Doshi family for your generous gift, allowing us to expand Marshi Ayurveda to the Western United States. We have been teaching uh, the masters in Marshi Ayurveda for seven years now. And we've grown from 20 students initially to now over 300. And this fall will be over 400 students uh, becoming practitioners of Maharshi Ayurveda. Uh, to bring Maharshi Ayurveda to the world, we have to have people practicing, uh, physicians, and these practitioners will be quite expert in all the nuances of Maharshi Ayurveda. They study 
post diagnosis, they study consciousness based approach to health, they study the herbs, dietary recommendations, lifestyle modifications, and so forth. And it's quite an extensive education. And the culmination and crucial piece of that education is their clinical training. They have to see patients. And we, we meet with President Hagelin and Dr. Keith Wallace, our founding president, and Dr. Schneider and our leadership each week to discuss this expansion. And I quite remember thinking, how in the world are we going to find place for 400 people to gain their clinical training several times a year, plus our almost 400 bachelor's students coming up. Where is this going to happen? And President Hagelin, I quite remember the day, said, we have a wonderful donor who's given us a building, which we think will become uh, one of our clinical centers from RCI Ayurveda in the United States. And I remember feeling a great wave of joy and relief at that moment. So you have made it possible uh, Dr. Doshi and Pratima and the family to accomplish this, to give clinical training to 800 Ayurveda students. And you can imagine when we graduate all those people, suddenly Maharishi Ayurveda will be available pretty much everywhere. So it's a very exciting moment to inaugurate this wonderful center of the Doshi Center for Integrative Medicine. Deep thanks to all the organizers and the donors and all those our great Vajas and doctors, Vajja Manohar, Dr. John Samara, and others who will be operating the center. I look forward to visiting at some point. And we're so inspired by Dr. Doshi when he says, keep playing, keep learning, keep transcending. And each of us has to realize oneness. And that is ultimately the goal of Maharishi Ayurveda, to realize that unified field which connects us all. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. It was very inspiring, very beautiful. Really, really appreciated. And through the wonders of technology, I do believe, I certainly hope, that uh, dear Dr. Manohar is with us. I'd like to introduce Dr. Manohar Palakorti, uh, who is not only a trained Ayurvedic, it's something, by the way, that says there's a problem with the technical on the screen. Is, it, is that OK? OK, so we think we're OK. Um, as he is joining us from India. It's God knows what time there. Uh, he is always, always so willing to serve in every way. Dr. Manohar, uh, who just published, uh, basically, his thesis, doctoral level, PhD level thesis on this subject of not even young, pulse diagnosis and scientifically correlating it with modern Western um, diagnosis in a highly statistically significant way. In any case, Dr. Manohar is really one of the lead Vijas on Earth today. He spent 30 years pioneer, doing really important pioneering work on the complete revitalization of Ayurvedic medicine with His Holiness Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. And he trained with and worked for decades alongside such world-renowned experts as uh, Brihaspati Dev Triguna as Vaidya Balraj Maharshi, world's leading expert in, in Drava Guna, um, in, uh, with Vaidya Dwivedi, the world's leading expert in Ayurvedic mineral and medical preparations. He has, as did Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, worked with the best, trained with the best, and is now really a great trainer, really, you could say, a, a Vaidya of Rajas, and Vaidya of Vaidyas, a really top, top trainer and a tremendous asset for this world that we're so grateful to have in our program. And temporarily in India, working there, but we'll soon be return to Los Angeles and be stationed here where he knows so many people. And um, Dr. Manohar, if you are indeed with us technically, please send us your greetings. I, I hope that we've been able to connect as planned. Thank you. Thank you, President Ji, uh, Raja Heglin Ji. <clears throat> and thank you, uh, the Doshi's family and for their noble act and giving this place uh, for Maharshi Ayurveda. Uh, I'm going to say some expression from Itihasa, that is Mahabharat in Drona Parva by King 
ranti deva he says natvaham kamaye rajyam na sargam na anu punarbhavam kamaye dukkha taptanam praninam artmattinashanam i do not have any desire for this kingdom nor heaven nor even birthlessness moksha all that i am desirous of is mitigating the sorrows of the living this is uh, ranti deva a, a king explained in drona parva in mahabharat itihasa itihasa is uh, known as a blossoming totality this is the nature of uh, a individual has a charity but that charity is just to eliminate the a people's misery so i remember this expression when i am thinking about the navin and pratima joshi ji with their kind heart and giving this place for maharshi ayurved or integrative approach to health and they are like modern ranti deva modern ranti deva in modern times ranti devas so thank you again and we are very fortunate to have center for integrative medicine in los angeles inauguration on the day of everlasting achievements akshaya tritiya gratitudes infinite thanks to navin ji and pratima ji and all doshi's family for their kind heart and noble action and their participation to help to bring heaven on earth and disease free society this is maharshi's desire for the world invincibility enlightenment to the people of los angeles and whole world maharshi total knowledge is like a kama dhenu kalpa vruksha chinta mani kama dhenu means desire fulfillment of all desires and kalpa vruksha means kalpa means transforming all our desires into achievements and chinta mani and very free life and mahashi's knowledge is source of all effluence dhataram sarva sampadam dhataram his knowledge is the greatest fear fire as gita says nahi gnane na sadrisam pavitra mahi vidyate tasvayam yoga samsiddha kale na atma nivindati so knowledge is the greatest fear fire mahashi's knowledge knowledge on the basis of consciousness is so purifying effect on every individual life so dhataram sarva sampada this knowledge is giving all effluence to the whole mankind a skill in action mahashi's knowledge will bring the skill in action because it's based on as the president explained unified field and yoga the skill in action only experience of that unified field and yoga which brings that skill in action and also mahashis uh, that is called in gita uh, expressed in gita uh, karma sukkaushalam skill in action comes only experience of consciousness experience of that unity of the physiology performance of action without any difficult without difficult aklishta karma nah this is expression given to the ram ram's action doesn't have any difficult to uh, you know mm, perform so aklishta klishta means uh, difficult aklishta in his actions uh, there is no difficulties so mahashi's knowledge also bring that uh, action of ram so akshaya tritiya may this day of new beginning the day of everlasting achievements create a wave of indomitable awakening in world consciousness awakening every human being to his her uh, inalienable dignity in supreme freedom and full enlightenment in brahmi chetana the unity consciousness may every individual visit this place rise to invincibility life in accord with natural law enlivening the six darshana six cognitions of veda and vedic literature in their awareness nyaya vaisheshika sankhya yoga karma mimamsa and vedanta the whole concept of vedanta is that unified field theory ines 
and six darshanas in their awareness with the justice, perfect health, peace, unity, and prosperity enjoyed by each and every individual in Los Angeles, through Los Angeles, to the whole world, through the Doshi's family, through this building, through this knowledge of Maharshi. And may our whole world shine like a glorious garden of unity in diversity, in the golden sunshine of Maharshi's global Ram Raj. And Maharshi's Vedic technologies of consciousness, Vedic health for powerfully enlivening harmony and coherence, all life supporting values in world consciousness through this Doshi Center. Uh, we fondly remember the following two expressions from the beginning and end of Maharshi's time of teaching in this world. Number one, Maharshi said, I will fill the world with love and create heaven on earth in the beginning. And the end, he said, the future of the world is bright and that is my delight. May all of Maharshi's divine plans now be fulfilled through the Doshi's integrative um, Maharshi Ayurveda consciousness-based approach to health, that center, through this center, it will spread to the, all the Los Angeles, to the whole world. Finally, Maharshi Ji said, there are five counters needed in every uh, integrative Maharshi Ayurveda centers. Those five counters, number one is, Jnana Siddhi, knowledge, acquiring the knowledge, knowledge of consciousness. Knowledge is structured in consciousness. That's the number one um, counter. Number two counter, Mahashi said, Vastu Shanti. Vastu Shanti means life in accord, in, in accord with the principles of the house, because the principles of house are supposed to harmony with the laws of nature. So Vastu Shanti, Vedic architecture, that's a second counter. Third counter, Mahashiji explained, Graha Shanti, peace with the planets, harmony with the planets, Graha Dinam Jagat Sarvam, the whole universe depends on these planets. So that's why every individual is, uh, his life in happiness or misery based on this harmony with the planets. So that's the third counter. Fourth counter uh, is Deha Shanti. Deha Shanti means uh, the peace in the physiology. Mahashiji explains a principle from Patanjali Yoga Sutras, Ahimsa Pratishtaya, Tat Sannidhau Vairatyagaha, in the vicinity of the coherence that is explained by Raja Heglinji and uh, uh, that unified field, the Atma, Atma-based approach to health, within that experience of that Atma, Absolute, Shivam, Shantam, Advaitam, Chaturdham, that field, that Absolute field experience is only the source of health. So Mahashiji explained on the basis of Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Ahimsa Pratishtaya, Tat Sannidhau, Vairatyagaha, even though in the physiology, many systems, many functions, trillions of cells doing all diversified functions, but on the basis of that absolute, that unified field on the Atma, everything functioning very coherently, that is the sign of health. The health is wholeness, the health is bliss, the health is state of Ananda, Ananda, as uh, Dr. Uh, Navinji explained, the whole purpose of life is Satchit Ananda, that bliss consciousness. So uh, the, that is the fourth counter. The fifth counter uh, is uh, for Samu Hikachitana, the um, collective consciousness. Through this center, we create the collective consciousness in the LA, through LA, through the whole USA, uh, with the scientists like world premier scientists like uh, President Heglin has shown this uh, um, scientific uh, study in uh, um, Washington DC also. The collective consciousness is a master stroke to creating the um, perfect health, 
perfect coherence and then quality of life to improve the quality of life this is a master stroke the samuhik chetana collective consciousness is a very important aspect of maharshi consciousness based approach to health maharshi introduced multi modality approach everything anything which is helping to the health is considered as veda veda means total knowledge the total knowledge only capable of creating perfect health the total knowledge adhyatmika adi daivika adi bhautika this is a, a knowledge of totality atma veda vishwa and atma veda sharira vishwa and brahm this is the total knowledge so this aspects of knowledge which flourish which explore in this uh, darshi center as uh, our dean dr robert snyder ji's guidance the more research more exploration in this field of ayurveda bringing more object validation to the scientific world we will hope succeed through this building to the whole world to show the the need and the necessity the truth and the bliss through ayurveda to the whole world thank you sir thank you giving this opportunity to speak thank you do dr manohar that was blissful <laughs> May the whole world shine with the bliss of Dr. Manohar's ojas. That's that we could also say. What a marvelous, marvelous presentation that was. Thank you, sir. And thank you. And alongside for integrative medicine, Ayurvedic medicine is modern medicine. And for that, I'm really proud to introduce right now our chief medical doctor, uh, Western medical doctor. That's Dr. John Zamara, renowned cardiologist, clinical professor. of physiology and health at Maharshi International University medical director of the natural medicine and preventive health pc organization fellow of the american college of physicians fellow of the american college of cardiology 49 years of experience in medicine 30 years of experience with maharshi ayurveda in america and his md from new york state university uh, dr john zamara Thank you Dr. Hagen. I'm honored to be here for sure. And I'd like to express my gratitude for this opportunity to provide both a mechanism for MIU to establish presence in Southern California. I'm really happy to do that. And for Marshi Ayurveda to be reestablished here once again. So in my doing this, in a way, I'll be working from home here. and actually homing from work. So <laughs> I I ready to bring impetus to the integration of modern science and Vedic medicine and its practical aspect through the practice of medicine with my ability to work as a physician in both traditions of which I am trained. And I would like to start off by reading a quote about the origin of ayurveda and yes this is very indian and yes i'm very western but i really like this this is from the bhagavanta a most wonderful person arose from the milk ocean as it was being churned by the devas and the asuras he carried in his hands a kalash full of amrit and was decorated with beautiful bracelets indeed he had emanated from a ray of shri vishnu himself he was known by the name dantvantri and it was he who revealed ayurveda to the entire world that's the bhagavatam 8 30 to 34 and i would like to say with severe sincere bhakti i bow down to dantvantri the first deva at whose feet the sores and the sores prostrate in this world old age pain fear and death are destroyed by the supporter protector and lord of all medicinal wealth jagu dev jagu dev thank yes. you thank you very much dr zamara and thank you for taking uprooting your life more or less in your very wonderful medical practice to focus now primarily 
on this beautiful medical clinic, in this integrative approach to health, this holistic approach to health, which will certainly take advantage of all of your vast medical knowledge and experience, and at the same time incorporating the gems of wisdom and powerful preventative treatments from the East and the beautiful tradition of Ayurvedic medicine. On my left side is Dr. Anita Garlapata, Garlapati, who is also joining us, you could say by Dr. Zamara's side, as a medical doctor, also schooled, trained, skilled in Ayurvedic medicine, both. She could say is an integrative expert, but certainly modern medicine has been her focus and her practice. And she is going to be helping us keep our clinic open more days a week, ultimately six, but we're starting with a more modest beginning because this is the day of new beginnings. And before too, too long, certainly by fall, we hope to be open five to six days a week. And we're just building to that. We're just, this is the first official opening day of the Navin in Pratimidoshi uh, Center for Integrative Medicine. So we're starting modestly and we're going to grow exponentially. Doctor, please, any words of welcome would be appreciated. I'm really honored and blessed to be part of Doshi Integrated Medicine. I want to just tell a small story, what made or what pulled me towards integrated medicine. Being a conventional doctor, I, and uh, due to family history, I suffered terrible migraine headaches in my mid-40s. And being a conventional doctor, I, my, I pull towards all the um, conventional medicine, went to the neurologist, got an extensive workup, MRIs, and medications. Have been put on multiple medications without any significant benefit or improvement except for the side effects of the medications. I felt very helpless. Being a physician, I have to work. <laughs> and I didn't feel, I was felt as though I was only band-aided on my problem, but mm -hmm. not fixed. Mm -hmm. So going through all this journey of suffering, I came across transcendental meditation, and which was a miracle in my life. And I started practicing transcendental meditation. And mm -hmm. Before transcendental meditation, I was had nerve blocks for my migraine headaches. I was put on three different medications, mm. which only caused lots of side effects. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I couldn't tolerate. After practicing transcendental meditation for like two, three years, I've been pulled off, off of medication. I'm completely off of my medication. I feel much more better. Looking at my own personal experience, I realized, how can I help my patients? Am I doing a band-aid job? Am I only doing a physical, I'm only healing their physical body. But I feel like Ayurveda is something you need to heal physically, emotionally, mindfully, and spiritually, which is very important for the wholeness of the human being. And this led me to be the part of MIU, and I feel honored and blessed. And looking at, I also worked during COVID, which was very emotional and stressful. Mm -hmm. um, I have never seen so much death in my life. Mm -hmm. And which made me feel, how can I pull myself through the emotional trauma, like all the healthcare people are going, being myself healthy, uh, strong, to help other people at the same time. What helped me the most compared to my colleagues doing my job at the same to my best and not getting breakdown is transcendental meditation. Mm -hmm. So I requested and recommended most of my colleagues about the benefits of it. And I also like being part of integrated medicine, which has been started in the hospital for better healing of the patients mm -hmm. to other holistic methods like Reiki healing and other modalities available. So looking into it, I'm also looking at the healthcare, how it is going. Today, medicine is in, in the midst of crisis. We all know that. Calls to reform healthcare are in forefront economic and political discussions worldwide. Economic pressure that is put on the 
physicians reduce the time to spend with the patients, contributing also to the physician burnout and without any best results, affecting the patient hydrogenically because of the short duration of the time a physician spends with the patient. So I feel uh, it's an honor to be part of this integrated medicine center and recognize the human poses of emotional, mental, and spiritual dimensions that are very essential in the diagnosis and that are diagnosis and treatment of disease and cultivation of wellness of the humankind. And integrative medicine is not just concerned, of, is concerned about the whole person rather than the physicality of the person. So I'm very proud to be part of this. And I also noticed that integrated medicine heals from inside, whereas conventional medicine heals from outside. So I'm very blessed. Thank you for giving me such a beautiful opportunity. Wish and pray that God blesses me to contribute something to the center and help as many people as possible. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. That was extremely moving and very deep and a very, very powerful message, important message that everybody, I'm sure, will take in and is moved by very much. So thank you. It's, a, it's fantastic that you are joining this Marshi Ayurveda Integrative Medicine Program. Your expertise and your dedication is, is very much appreciated. Thank you. And I'm coming from San Diego. So I'll be yeah. coming from San Diego. <laughs> that, <laughs> so, that, <yeah>. is, <laughs> that shows dedication right there because LA traffic, area traffic is not famously good. <laughs> um, and we're blessed with another wonderful Anita, Anita Misra, who is on my right side now, who is an Ayurvedic doctor and uh, a def also a, uh, a graduate of our mas Masters of Science in Marshi Ayurveda in Integrative Medicine. She is Adjunct Professor of Physiology and Health at Marshi International University. She is founder of Ayurvedic Life Care Wellness and Panchakarma Center in Bhubaneswar. Uh, she's instructor in our MS Mavim program now and a great practitioner and advocate of Transcendental Meditation and Yoga. So uh, rounding out the Ayurvedic side and yoga side of our program, uh, please welcome Anita Misra. Thank you. So, so glad to be here. We are all here for the next level of our beloved Maharshi Mahesh Yogi's vision of Ayurveda, the science of perfect health. He always referred it so lovingly in every recording I have watched him. We are all here because of the dedication of the integrated doctors, Dr. Wallace, Dr. Snyder, Dr. Nancy, Dr. Elder, Dr. Paul, Dr. Dwayne, Dr. Jim, and now I make acquaintance with Dr. Zamara, Dr. Anita. I'm so sure the list is going to grow and grow for good. Your tireless work, many, many years creating bachelor's, master's, and now PhD coursework in Ayurveda, teaching and inspiring the students, practicing and serving the community, spreading the knowledge and benefits of Ayurveda to those who need the most. My gratitude to you. Today, I want to thank my fellow practitioners who are passionately serving the community despite many hurdles, both in India and United States and other countries too. The struggle and perseverance of a Vaidya to uphold science and the efforts of the scientific community are the driving force for this next level. On the same note, we cannot forget the contribution of our generous donors, unseen, unheard, dedicated hands who join this mission without hesitance, assisting and supporting the growth of MIU. The founding leaders and faculties of the university, including many Ivy League trained scholars, 
who followed the core ideas of Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, the science of creative intelligence, the transcendental meditation, published scientifically researched studies for decades, establishing the validity again and again, the benefits of TM in daily work and life. But Mahashi was a visionary. He didn't stop there. He recognized what about this body? Only if the body is in perfect health, we can achieve a perfect life. Our experiences depends on the harmony of the balanced body and mind. 25 years ago, when I was in teens, trying to figure out my life's path, our beloved Maharshi tirelessly created the foundation of Ayurveda in the United States and infused it with the essence of consciousness-based health approach. So I want to share with you my humble story. Mm -hmm. After completing my entrance exam for the medical school, I was sitting in the counseling area with my father. I had two choices, homeopathy or Ayurveda. On my right was the room for homeopathy admission. I had lived all my life until then with homeopathy, meaning my first line of family's health was homeopathy. And we had renowned homeopathy practitioners in our family too. And then there was Ayurveda towards the left. <laughs> the only thing I knew was I liked the name Ayurveda. <laughs> Anyways, to pass the time before making up my mind, I picked up a magazine on the health issue, flipped it to a random page. The first title I see, Ayurveda in United States. Mm -hmm. The heading was my calling. Intrigued, I read the article. Aha, I presented it to my dad and he read it too. He looked to me and said, okay, let's go to the left room <laughs> for my Ayurvedic um, admission. And that was it. My heart knew it's going to be a long bumpy road ahead, but I will get there. Maharshi brought in the best of the best Vaidyas to the United States. Renowned Vaidyas, Bhagwan, Vaidya Palraj, Vaidya Tivedi, and many other Vaidyas after them. As a student of Ayurveda, I longed to have the presence and blessings of these great teachers. I read every book they wrote, trying to understand this expansive science. After all these years, I gained the presence of our respected Vaidya Manohar, who dedicated his life teaching, spreading, promoting, curing, and giving health. In his 30 years of tapasya, upholding the authentic Ayurvedic scriptures of Ayurveda, shaping Maharshi's vision for Ayurveda for the next level. I'm here with his blessings and blessing of all his teachers, all my teachers, to serve this community here at Doshi Center for Integrative Health. I'm humbled and ever grateful for this opportunity. The testimony of this great science derived from Veda is its very existence, alive, serving those who seek, its continuity in spite of unfavorable political, economic, financial, as well as social neglect over thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Today's era has its own unique bottlenecks, insurance, FDAs, regulations, lack of resource, to name a few. Yet, we are standing strong and we are ready to serve. The balanced health that Maharshi visioned. This is my dedication to the Doshi Center for Integrative Health. Thank you, Doshi family, for this beautiful gift to MI. Thank you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Vaidya Misra, I am again struck, as I have been all day today, by the, the brilliance and the sattva, the wisdom, depth, profundity, dedication of all of those who have been drawn to this place. And it's first day of opening, and very much in ex an expansionary phase, it's clearly drawn all the right people with all the right intentions and all the right motivations. I think anyone who comes to this facility 
seeking alternative or modern allopathic or Ayurvedic medical advice for help are going to be extremely satisfied, overjoyed to be with souls as wise, as generous, and as kind as all of you. We are just about at the end of our, our, our time with a few quick treats. I'm going to first, though, connect us with Dr. Brian, Colonel Dr. Brian Reese. And we can stay here if you wish, it's fine, because these are going to be connecting via Zoom, I believe. Uh, Dr. Colonel Brian Reese is Executive Director of a program called Transcendental Meditation for Veterans. Uh, he's an MD, uh, MPH, from Tulane University. He's done five tours of Iraq and Afghanistan as a medical officer. He has residency at Tripler Army Medical Center. He's board certified in family medicine. He was the medical director of the Maharshi Ayurveda Medical Center in Pacific Palisades, California, from 1987 to 1998. He's been a teacher of Transcendental Meditation for 39 years. So with the help of technology, Dr. Reese, are you with us for a few words of encouragement before we wrap up today? So if Dr. Reese is having any trouble connecting, I will then go to our last Zoom expert who's come to join us, and that would be Dr. Alan Steinberg, MD, clinical professor of Maharshi Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine at Maharshi International University, MD from the University of Nevada, a residency at USC Huntington Memorial Hospital in Internal Medicine, board certified in Internal Medicine, FM Cedars Signer Medical Center Association, a certified TM teacher as well as adjunct professor at MIU. So, Alan, Dr. Steinberg, can you connect from afar? Can you hear me? Yes, we can and see you. Oh, good. Perfect. Good. Well, thank you, Dr. Uh, and President Hagelin, for your uh, introduction. Um, I want to offer my great gratitude to Dr. Doshi and Pratima Doshi for their brilliant gift and their tremendous foresight in seeing the future of what medicine should be. I have been practicing internal medicine and Ayurvedic medicine in Los Angeles for over 35 years. And all those years, having my metaphorical fingers on the pulse of the patients of Los Angeles, um, I think I sort of know what we really need. And what we really need is the Doshi Center. So thank you for bringing this profound, deep healing to our patients of Los Angeles, to my patients. It's going to be what exactly the doctor and all the other doctors order and should be ordering. Um, I'm so excited to work with the Doshi Center and to do whatever I can to make it the world-class institution I know it will be. Thank you for allowing me this great opportunity and my, again, gratitude to the staff and the doctors of the Ayurvedic Doshi Center and Jay Gurudev. All right. Thanks so very much. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for all the service you have given over so many years. And thank you for the wisdom and dedication that you've brought to our wonderful endeavor so here. Maybe it's working now. Aha, uh -huh. look, we look who shows up. <laughs> Brian. Yes. Can you can you hear me, Doctor? Doctor Brian Reese? Uh, Doctor Brian Reese, I can hear you. Hold, now. hold on. Hello, Doctor Hagelin, can you hear me? Yes, I gave the most eloquent introduction to you you have ever received, and so now I'm just going to let you go ahead and give your blessings as we close up today's event. Well, uh, thank you very much for that introduction. I'm sure it was marvelous and more that I deserve, and certainly the most recent, so thank you. Um, so it does seem that we're uh, going a little back to the future. We, we did, of course, have the Maharishi Ayurveda Medical Center here in the 80s and 90s, um, but it was uh, not specifically integrative and uh, did not have the robust 
academic affiliation with MIU. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, um, I can see now that those, I think, are essential elements uh, that I wish would have occurred to me at the time, but fortunately were the uh, beneficiaries of the wisdom and vision of uh, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Doshi and uh, Drs. Uh, Schneider and Moorhead and uh, Harriet and, and so forth. So uh, it, it may indeed seem that this inauguration today, as you've mentioned, is uh, modest, but I recall um, Marishi back when he was inaugurating the dawn of the Age of Enlightenment saying that uh, if we are to anticipate the dawn, uh, it must be done in the dark. And so I think this modest beginning is the tiny uh, acorn from which um, this, the mighty oak of integrative medicine will grow. And I'm very much looking forward to whatever degree um, uh, getting the band back together with uh, Dr. Zamara and of course, uh, Dr. Manohar, I'm very eager to learn uh, what his uh, children have been up to since I used to drive him and uh, my children to grade school in the mornings back in the day. Uh, so uh, in any case, uh, congratulations to all with regard to this um, auspicious inauguration. And uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, participate this morning. Thank you very much for your remarks today and for your constant support for this endeavor over so many years and having taught so many in the military, so many veterans and so many projects. Um, you're a tremendous asset. We really appreciate it. And before we go to our entertainment, which will be amazing, we have another amazing thing, and that is an opportunity to hear from one of our absolutely wonderful students of our Maharshi Ayurveda Integrative Medical Program. And this is uh, just a remarkable young woman who is, uh, at the same time as being a student, is also managing our operation right here in the heart of Los Angeles. Please welcome Emily Fitzrandolph. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and representing the students of the master's program. It's been an absolute joy to be listening to all of you. I want to thank Raja Hagelin and Dr. and Mrs. Doshi, my wonderful professors, Dr. Schneider, Dr. Moorhead, by Jamanahar, Dr. Anita, so lovely to see you. Um, it's really a joy to be part of this program and an incredibly rich experience to learn Marishi Ayurveda. We learned when we first started as students, as Dr. Hagelin mentioned, that the fundamental nature of Ayurveda is, even beyond the three doshas, is consciousness. And that as practitioners, we are meeting with our clients atma to atma. And this really valuable experience of learning in this sort of container of knowledge that we have really enables us to grow. So a few months ago, we studied the cardiovascular system and we learned that the heart is the seat of consciousness. And I was thinking as I thought about the Doshi Center that now this center is the heart, it's the seat of, of knowledge. And so I hope that this center allows us to now grow our own consciousness and let that consciousness flow to Los Angeles and from there to the rest of the world. Wow. So thank you so much for allowing us all to be here and learn and gain this valuable knowledge to help heal the world. It's so very, very inspiring, Emily. Thank you very much. And Maharshi Mahashogi, as he was just leaving this world and his consciousness was expanding cosmically, said, the future of the world is bright, and that is my delight. Now, Maharshi, a seer, a sage, obviously saw something that I didn't at the time. <laughs> but now I'm beginning to see with Emily and some of our other very young, incredible, incredible students and vijas and doctors, the future is indeed bright and that should be all of our delight. So we are gonna end with a remarkable, having experienced it once before, a remarkable treat. Dr. Navin Doshi has written a very profound and wonderful poem. It's very erudite, it's very important, it's very moving. And although Dr. Doshi himself is a very articulate man, uh, this time, this message, this poem will be, will be presented in musical form 
sung by the extremely talented artist and wonderful soul, Tara DeSantis, and accompanying her, joining her today in singing this beautiful poem, will be Navin's granddaughter, Navin and Pratima's granddaughter, Manali McCarthy. So she will join in, and um, you're comfortable where you are, mics and all? Yes. All right, so I'll let you, I was going to offer you my seat, but I will let you stand, and I'll try not to join in because that would spoil it completely. <clears throat> let us end with this uh, really, really beautiful, moving song. And those who are here, at least, have um, the words which are really worth following and taking to heart. So let us uh, end this auspicious, this auspicious Akshaya Tritiya Day celebration of the inauguration of this important new medical health initiative in Los Angeles with this profound and beautiful moving song. Thank you Thank so you. much. We're going to get some levels here. One, two, three. I think it sounds good. Can everyone hear me? Good. Awesome. Well, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very grateful for the doshis. And uh, I'm going to perform the poem by Mr. Doshi. It's called Unity, and it's an amazing song. And it has already almost accumulated 60,000 plays online. So it's really a peace anthem, and it has been appreciated all over the world. I'm going to be performing this one, and then the wonderful Manali is going to join me for a new song that we, create, we created this week. So um, we will start with Unity, the studio version. And 
I am also Christian. I'm a Muslim and I am Sikh. I'm sun, moon, the sounds and the music. The sounds and the music. The sounds and the music. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Ari anta namo kara namio hengeo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Allahu akbar. I can't wait to see you. Me, we are so supreme. Me, we are so supreme. Om a ben mi. Om a ben mi. Unity. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are now going to perform a new fresh song just out of the oven that we have written this week and recorded in the studio, what, two days ago? So bear with us, we are still um, mastering it. And it's a beautiful song that Mr. Doshi also wrote. And uh, it's one of my favorite songs right now. It's called Now. Enjoy. So I would ask that that cosmic intelligence that governs everything and is everything and all the celestial administrators bless 
this initiative on this auspicious day to bring the maximum good to the most people and indeed help to transform the world to its next phase in which it'll be based on more complete, more profound, more powerful knowledge. And also bless the great Doshi family, Navin, Pratima, Manali, and all the rest uh, for their great gift to Los Angeles, to Maharshi International University, and to the world to the promotion of a more complete and profound system of health care for all. And for all of you out there, all of our honored guests all over the world who are connected today, I wish you perfect health and happiness and encourage you to call the number or write the email on the screen to book an appointment to enjoy the wisdom and the health promotion that all of these wonderful exponents of health and profound practitioners of prevention of disease and promotion of health from whom you have heard today. And do it quickly because <laughs> we're going to get a lot. Thank you. So blessings to everybody. What a wonderful beginning and uh, the future is bright, I think, and that is all of our delight. Thank you all. Oh, there's a Zoom link for tonight? All right, so we'll let me hand it out. Apparently there will same, be, same Zoom, same it's the same, same link for everybody still connected if you wish to enjoy tonight's banquet celebration taking place here in Los Angeles. Um, you are welcome to join in or for friends of yours who might have missed today's uh, ceremony, they'll have an opportunity to see a review of it and perhaps some of that marvelous entertainment again this evening. That'll be around 7 p.m. Uh, California time this evening on the Zoom link that you're connected to now. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>